ushering a new year and today's word. Stand to your feet with us. But he did. 
He didn't have to bring you through those storms, but he did. He didn't have to provide you with food on your table, roof over your head, clothing on your back, but he did. He didn't have to give you the right frame of mind, but he did. And for that, we ought to tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you for just keeping us one more time. Listen, we're going to keep going. We're going to climb a little higher. Our choir is coming. They're going to bless us and take us higher in the Lord. Amen. Amen.
first um, a few announcements that we want to get out on today. Uh, let me start by first applauding and commending each of you for being here so we can start on time. Amen. 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 We are willing to keep that going. Amen. Uh, and, and I have to tell myself this first lady has already uh, put a foot on my neck and said, listen, we start on time. Amen. But guess what? I'm going to be obedient because we need to start on time. Amen. Amen. But I'm thankful for each of you. Uh, I know most of us, uh, most of us young folk, we was up late last night. Amen. Amen. And we saw the new year come in. Amen. But we rolled on out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, next Sunday, next Sunday, we are the invited guests of the Hopewell uh, uh, Church of Dolphin Road. They will be having their installation of officers. So next Sunday at the 3 p.m. hour, please, please, uh, choir ushers, everyone that can come and fellowship with us at 3 p.m. next Sunday. Now, let me backtrack. Uh, the ushers have provided uh, calendars for the 2023 year. Amen. That way you know what's going on. Now, that is subject to change every now and again, but however, uh, also an electronic version has been sent out. If you are getting the emails from the church, you would have received that as well. Uh, but we want to make sure that we are well prepared for this year and knowing in advance of what's coming and what's happening. Uh, so next Sunday, we are the invited guests of the Hopewell Church. Uh, and then moving a little further ahead, y'all can see in February, Second Sunday in February, we will be having our Pastor and Marriage celebration uh, during our morning worship service. Our invited guest is our uh, none other than Reverend uh, John uh, Denley, uh, our family member. He will come and uh, share with us what God has shared with him. We are looking for a grand event to celebrate Dr. McNeil. Amen. Amen. He has provided. 17, 18 years of service here at the church giving leadership. So we want to make sure that we celebrate him for all that he has done uh, in his service. So the second Sunday in February will be that celebration. Um, also, we are, a uh, date has been set uh, for the pastor installation service that will be the fourth Sunday in March. The fourth Sunday in March, and we are uh, gearing up, and I'm thankful unto God that uh, uh, my aunt, um, Sister Glenn, amen, will be uh, the chairperson of making sure that that service goes, and we are planning accordingly, so I'm sure she will come uh, as time gets going, and we will have further information, but the date has been set for the fourth Sunday in March, and we are looking for a grand time that day. Amen. Amen. Not just because of this desolation, but listen, we looking to have church. Amen. We looking to have a good time in the Lord, so I'm excited about that as well. Also, as always, let's keep our known signal shut in and your thoughts and prayers, Dr. McNeely, our mothers, those names that we do not have. Uh, we know that God is able and we are definitely lifting up one another in prayer. This is a new month. This is a whole new month, a whole new year and you look, I, I, listen, <laughs> listen, if you are celebrating a birthday this month, January, the first month of the year, raise your hand. Let me see who's celebrating. Amen. Amen. This is Herbert's to Tavia. Amen. Morgan. Morgan. Amen. Amen. So everybody that is celebrating a birthday, bro, Braylon, uh, man, maybe 19 is Lord have mercy. 
Amen. So everybody that is celebrating the birthday this one, happy birthday to you. God is good. And anytime you get to celebrate another year of life, it's truly a blessing unto God, especially in times that we live in right now. So happy birthday to you and may God bless you and keep you for many more years to come. Amen. Now, now, are there any wedding anniversaries that, uh, <laughs> that are being celebrated in January? All right. Amen. 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 Myself and First Lady, we are celebrating 17 years of marriage on today. Amen. Today is our wedding anniversary, and I'm thankful unto God that she put up with me for 17 years. Amen. God is good, and I am thankful, and I am excited for the love that we've shared. I'm thankful that God has kept us, and I'm looking forward to 70 more years. Amen. A battle to excitement with Sister Wright. So we are excited. We thank you. For all of those that have told us happy anniversary, we love you. We thank God for what he has done for us. All right. Uh, I don't think we have any of, let me backtrack. The youth, the youth will start rehearsing for our Black History program uh, at 11 o'clock this Saturday. This coming Saturday, they will start rehearsing for that. Uh, we are hoping and planning, doing our best to have our youth to sing as well. We're working on trying to uh, get a director for the, our children. Um, so we're uh, working diligently with our youth department to make sure that we get that to, have, to happen. We want our youth to be active and to be busy in the Lord that they, they don't get too busy anywhere else. So we are looking forward to that. But Saturday at 11, please, ma'am, and sirs, parents, have your children here so that we can plan and be ready for a great program in February. All right. Is there anything else? All right, we're going to get that checked. All right, let's keep climbing higher. Keep going. Our choir, thank y'all for blessing us this morning. Y'all come on, take us a little bit higher.
Amen. Thank you, choir, for blessing us this morning. Amen. Amen. It's preaching time, y'all. It's preaching time. Amen. 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 The 21st chapter, the book of Luke. 21st chapter of the book of Luke. There you will find what we will be discussing this morning. The Lord, He's blessing me. Amen. 
you still look and say, Lord, help. All right. And it reads as follows. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Amen. May the Lord bless us to the readers, hearers, most of all, the doers of his holy word. If you don't mind, allow me to use just for a thought or a subject this morning. Just push through it. Just push through it. And one day, not me, but an individual, it ain't been a long time, but one day an individual went to the gym. Yeah, I told you, I ain't been a long time. And this individual went to the gym and he observed someone else that was working out. And it seemed to be on that day, leg day. And, and this individual, they were, obviously, they was in an intensified workout. They was pushing it to the limit. And, and the trainer said to the trainee that, 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 that while they're pushing the weights on leg day, the trainer, uh, uh, it, they were there and they were already had done some squats. They were already doing some things. Now they were doing some leg presses. And the trainer said to the trainee, does it burn? Yeah. And at which point the, 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 the trainee, they, they said, well, the second word that they said was, yeah. <laughs> Y'all can fill in the blanks on the first word. And, and, and he asked them, does it burn? And he said, yes, it burns. It, it's difficult. It's hard to push this. And, and the trainer then replied to him, don't trip. Push through it. And, and, and for some of us, it seems that 2022 has been one of those burn years. For some, 2022 has been one of those excruciating years. Now, it has had some good days, no doubt. It's had some ups. There have been plenty of bad days also inserted into the 365 days of 2022. And there are some people sitting here on today that may be even sitting on your road who can testify that you've had some mountaintop experiences. You've had some celebra celebrations in 2022, but there are some people on the same road, same pew, that can say, yes, I've had some, but I've also experienced some valleys in 2022. Some of us can even sing that song today with a clear voice. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb, but when I think about all of it, my good days outweigh my bad, I won't complain. Can anybody testify that God has been good to me? So in the midst of all of the frustrations of 2022 and in the midst of all of the aggravations of 2022, listen, I came today to this passage of scripture that is nestled right there in this gospel of Luke to tell you that even those who are right there where we were in this new year another year we have the ability to lean and depend on God yeah. the truth of the matter is there, 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 there are some things that has a grip on us Let's be real. There, there are some things that have gripped us, that have handicapped us, that has debilitated us in 2022. And guess what? We won't be able to escape it in 2023. We, we, we won't shake it. And, and listen, just because we left 2022 behind, if it was only that easy, that we could have the grass removed from us, just because we went into another year. Listen, we're going to have to deal with some rough realities in 2023. Just like we did in 22. Now, now listen, 
Don't, don't, don't let me hijack your hallelujahs by that reality. Don't let me arrest your amens by telling you that. But I need you to hear that because I don't want to be a false prophet. I don't want to tell you that next year going to be your year, baby. Next year you're going to have it going on. I don't want to tell you that if it ain't. I can't tell you that you're not going to have any stormy days in 23 because into every one of our lives, some rain has got to fall. But I came to tell you that in the midst of your frustrations, in the midst of your storms, in the midst of your excruciating realities, my word for you today is push through. Listen, I came to find some soldiers in here today. I came to find some ride and die warriors who understand that every day won't be a day that I plan for it to be. But if God knows the plans that he has for me, I know that those plans are to prosper me and not to harm me, to give me hope and a future. And today, I just want to ensure that someone leaves church on today knowing that the expectations of this preacher on today and whatever you face in 2023, I want you to push through it. Push through it. I want to encourage you to push through it. And, and that's exactly what the Lord Jesus does with these who are following him in the, in the very last week of his life. These are they who have chosen to listen to Jesus. And as he has them assembled, he's assembled them at the temple to let them know some instructive information that's going to help them carry out the ministry. It's going to help them carry it out on the other side of the crucifixion and the resurrection. It is his expectation. That they would be the people who would continue the ministry that he began three years prior. And to do that, they need some information. They need some information that's going to help them to be the people that he's called them to be. Now listen, listen, he, he, he assembles these followers, these disciples, first the twelve and all of the others who are gathered around him since he's began his ministry. And he says to them, watch it, he says, to them, there are going to be some things that you're going to have to contend with on the other side of my resurrection. Now, that's what he's telling them. And after I've gone to the cross, he says, after I've gone to the cross and after I've been raised from the dead, there will still be some hurdles that you're going to have to jump. He's telling the disciples that there are still going to be some mountains that you're going to have to climb. There's still going to be some situations that you're going to have to persevere through. And so he gathers them, and while he's talking to them, he helps them to understand that you've got to push through it. Whether you like it or not, whether you appreciate it or not, whether you applaud it or not, if you're going to be my followers, he said, if you're going to be my disciples, if you are going to bear my name, you've got to push through it. And watch this. And he suggests in the first place, he suggests that you won't have to push through it because he says that there is a divine purpose behind our difficult predicaments. There's a divine purpose behind our difficult predicaments. And yeah, that's your first point right there if you're taking notes. Listen, everybody in church knows, I've already said it once today, that into every life, oh, yeah. rain falls. Everybody knows that you have to take the bitter with the sweet. Everybody knows that you have to deal with certain hardships in life. And so Jesus begins to enumerate for them what some of those hardships will be. He says, first of all, while they're gathered around the temple, he says that when the time comes, there are going to be folk who will see 
the destruction of this temple. They're in the temple, they're gathered there where they, they learn and they're and they looking at it. And he says that all of the beauty in this temple, verse 5 and 6, that all of the beauty in this temple is going to fade away. He says every stone is going to be heaped upon one another. And there's going to be a season where you will not be able to enjoy the beauty and the splendor of the place of worship. Now, this right here, when he tells them that, that cuts them to the core. Because it's in that space, it's there that they meet up with the Holy One. It's in that space where they encounter the eternal. They don't want to hear that their temple is going to be destroyed. Listen, how many of us want to hear that one day even this place will be destroyed? Nobody wants to hear it, but there's going to come a time when this place will no longer stand. And so these folks, their hearts are cut to the core. Because he tells them, you're going to have to deal with the destruction of this temple. But that's not all he tells them. He tells them in verse 7 that you are likewise going to have to deal with the proclamation of false prophets. He says, you're going to have to deal with the folk who will tell you that what I said is not what the truth really is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, you're going to have to deal with some folk that, 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 that your season of hardship won't be as extended. They're going to tell you, well, it, it's not going to be that long, this, that, the other. They're going to tell you that it won't be extended and it's really going to be. There are going to be some folk who will tell you, listen, just do it my way. And then everything is going to be all right. He said, don't listen to them because they are false prophets. He says, you're going to have to deal with the destruction of the temple. You're going to have to deal with the proclamations of false prophets. And then he tells them, you'll even have to deal with the insurrection, verse 10, of nations. Yeah, yeah. He says nations are going to rise against nations. Kingdoms going to rise against kingdoms. He said, and, and as a matter of fact, for us in about six days, uh, we, we going to remember that two years ago, nations rose up against nations because right here in the United States, we had an insurrection in our own nation. Because these people didn't want to see these people have access to the American promise. And so there they are. Here they are. Jesus tells them that there are going to be some insurrections. There are going to be some drama right up here in our own nation. There are going to be wars and rumors of wars. He says right there in verse 11, he says, you're going to have to deal with the devastation of all there are going to be wars, rumors of wars. There are going to be families that fight against families. There are going to be parents against children. It's going to get rough, and you're going to have to deal with it. You've got to experience it. Listen, you can't get away from it. You can't run from it. As a matter of fact, he tells them in verse 12, he tells them that there are going to be some disputations and persecutions of all kinds for my name's sake. That just because you say you love Jesus, somebody's going to hate on you. Just because you say you love the Lord and worship the Lord, somebody's going to look at you with a side eye. He said it's going to happen for his name's sake. But if you stop reading in verse 12, because if you stop reading in verse 12, you'll be depressed and demoralized if you stop reading in verse 12. But in verse 13, all of this is going to happen so that you'll be able to witness to somebody that despite all that you had to go through, I carried you through. I gave you victory on the other side of your adversity. Listen, I need to talk to somebody. I need to talk to somebody who went through hell in 2022. I need for you to open your mouth 
on this Sunday morning and testify. Listen, it was ugly then. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I never would have made it. Is there anybody in here who was sick, had COVID, the doctor told you some bad news, but he pulled you through? Listen, is there anybody in here who was broke in 2022, but God saw you where you were, paid your bills, God extended your resources? Listen, I need you to testify. I, I, he, he gave me victory over my adversities, and now I have a testimony to tell somebody else just how good God is. Listen, he said there is purpose behind your predicament. There's purpose behind your predicament. As a matter of fact, there's another, there's another song right that says, I thank God for my mountains. I thank God for my valleys. I thank him for the storms he brought me through. Because if I never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve them. I would, I would not have faith and know what God can do. But watch, he keeps on right. He says, but through it all, through it all, I learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Listen, anybody here got a through it all testimony? Listen, I didn't like it all, but it brought me through it all. But even when I was at my lowest, guess what? God was at his best. He says, there's divine purpose behind your difficult predicaments. Listen, stop running. Stop running away from all your problems. I know, I know you don't want to run to them. Who does? But endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He says, don't worry about it. Don't worry. That's what he says right there in verses 14 and 15. He says, don't worry about it. I want you to make up in your mind beforehand, before you take on, listen, any more days in 2023, listen, that you're not going to worry about anything. Make that up in your mind. That you're not going to worry about anything. Jesus says, just because I'm going to make sure. He said, I'm going to make sure that you have a word in your mouth. That's going to silence every yeah. hater yeah. that tries to come against you. He's talking, he's telling them, he's giving them some good stuff. God said, Jesus said, don't you worry about fear. Make up in your mind before you go through it. That I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress over it. I'm not going to trip about it. I'm going to push through it. Why? Why am I going to push through? Because he's going to give me a word to confound my adversaries. So Jesus says, I need you to push through it. And by the time he gets to verse 19, he gives you a word. The word that I gave for you in your hearing, in your patience. Possess ye your soul. That's a strong language that Jesus used. He told them all of the hell that they're going to have to endure. He gave them advance warning, first of all, that every day is not going to be pleasant. That linking up with the Lord, hooking up with the Holy One, will cause us to have some frustrating days. Nobody told me the road would be easy. Listen, you have to open your eyes. And I need you doing that in 2023 with your eyes wide open. Because listen, I don't want you to accuse me that of being no false prophet. I want you to know that everybody's heart is going to be broken. In 2023. Somebody's going to have to deal with grief. In 2023. Somebody's going to have to deal with the lack and loss. In 2023. But if you know. Who your God is. If you know. 
what your God is able to do. Listen, I showed up to tell you, you're going to have to push through it. Because secondarily, there is a definite possession within your deliberate patience. There's a definite possession within your deliberate patience. That word, patience, it's an interesting word. That word, uh, patience, is, is hupomokno in the Greek. It means to abide under. He literally paints the picture, Jesus does, of all of these pressures, oh, yeah. these weights oh, yeah. that are going to be on you. Yeah. He says, I don't want you to give up just because the weight oh, yeah. is on you. Yeah. He says, I want you to hoop, hoop them on it. <laughs> abide oh, yeah. under the weight. Oh, yeah. He says, I want you to get strong. Why are you going through it? He says, I want you to get stronger. As a matter of fact, any personal trainer will tell you, you cannot get stronger without lifting something heavy. You can't get stronger without lifting something heavy. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid that we got a whole lot of weak Christians that keep on running away from the weight. Because they don't want to develop any spiritual muscle. And I'm trying to tell you that the only way that you're going to develop some spiritual muscle, you've got to lift some heavy. Yeah, yeah, listen. My heart got broken. That's heavy. My bills need to be paid. That's heavy. The sickness in my body, that's heavy. My friends walked away from me. That's heavy. My family ain't talking to me. That's heavy. But by the time you get to December of 2023, you'll be able to say, if it had not been, the Bible said, I'm talking to him right now. He said, I'm stronger, I'm wiser, I'm better, much better. Anybody can look back and say, if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't be as strong as I am right now. If I hadn't had to deal with that, ain't no time, ain't no telling where I, what kind of weakling I would be right now. But thanks be unto God, I can handle some stuff because I've been through some stuff. It is literally a picture of endurance. It is a picture of endurance because the hope you have in Jesus Christ. Let me give it to you. Let me give it to you. The Greek word in this picture is hupomone, based on the rooted and rooted in the fact that you have hope in Jesus Christ. And because you know who Jesus is, and because you know what Jesus is able to do. Yeah. Therefore, you have hope that he's going to allow you to handle the weight. You have hope that you'll be able to endure it until times get better. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Y'all yeah, missed it. I said, he's going to help you handle the weight and endure it until times gets better. See, somebody should shout right there. That was your cue to shout and praise God. I just told you that, that, that times are going to get better. This is all y'all. Y'all missing it. You, you, I said you have to endure it till times get better. Implies, it implies that times and things are going to get better. Haven't I told you that, that, that better is on the way? Is there anybody here that believes that better is on the way that can help me encourage your neighbor and let them know it's going to be all right? Better is coming. The Bible says in James, James 1, count it all joy. 
when you encounter, endure various kinds of temptations. But the next verse says, because the trying of your faith works patience. And when your patience has its perfect work, you'll be complete, entire, lacking nothing. And the only way that you can be complete, entire, lacking nothing is that you have to count it all joy when you go through various kinds of tribulation. Listen, God deliver us from these saints who get a hangnail and can't say hallelujah. God deliver us from the folk who get a headache and can't say thank you Jesus. I need somebody who can testify. I, I got a thorn in my flesh. But I'm still going to shout hallelujah anyhow. I need somebody who can testify. I don't like this season that I'm in right now. But if God be for me, who can be against me? Paul says, I'll glory in my infirmities. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Has anybody ever seen the Lord make you stronger in your weakness? The Bible says, listen, my grace is sufficient for you because the strength will make you perfect. Even in your weakness. Listen, you'll never know how strong your God is till you get to your weakest point. You'll never know how strong he is until you get to your lowest point. You'll never know how big and bad and bodacious your God is until you expend all of your energy. You, once you get all tired and, and wore out and down and out and you ain't, you trying to figure out how you gonna make it out. Listen, it's at that moment when you find out I'm weak, I'm torn, I'm, I'm torn down, but God steps in and gives you strength. He'll be, listen, anybody here can testify that listen, he, he picked me up, dusted me off, gave me hope to keep on going, and from that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. But he says, in your patience, you are going to possess your soul. If you have the NIV version, it breaks it down a little better. He says, if you stand firm, you will gain life. The only way, the only way you can have a sure enough, abundant, and complete life is you have to learn how to stand under pressure. You have to learn how to stand under pressure. You don't run away from the church just because your boyfriend or your girlfriend broke your heart. You don't run away from the church just because your mama and daddy didn't return your phone call. Listen, who understands that some stuff will be rough in this life? But the same God who is with you on the mountaintop is the same God that will meet you in the back. The same God who is with you when you had a pocket full of money is the same God who is with you and will be with you when you're broke and disgusted. Who in here knows that God never changed? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the Bible says, in your patience, possess your soul. Have you heard about it? Have you heard about it? It's going to be some difficult, some difficult times. But, but just breeze on through it. Cruise right on through those difficult times. Don't try to handle it all by yourself. Because you have a God who's on your side. As a matter of fact, I have to tell you that because that's why Jesus says to those who are following him, he says, don't trip. Just push as a matter of fact, let me put it to you like this. This is the third and final point. Let me put it to you like this. There is a different perspective when you have a differing position. There's a different perspective when you have a differing position. You see, you see things differently based upon the position that you're in. Jesus says in verse 20, 28, this is what I want you to do. 
When you have to go through all this trauma, when you have to go through all this stress, all this foolishness, he said, this is what I want you to do. He says, stand up, look up, because redemption is now. Stand up. Look up. Because redemption. I, I, that's okay. You, 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 you don't have to understand at that time, but I'm going to help you understand. He said, when you're going through your drama, when you're going through your stress, if you're going through both of them at the same time, put it together, your struggle. When you're going through whatever you're dealing with, this is what I want you to do. Stop wallowing around in the dungeons of your depression. Stop acting like there's no hope for you in the midst of your situation. He says, this is what I want you to do. If you call yourself my father, if you call yourself my disciple, he says, I want you to stand up. Then I want you to look up because redemption is not. He says, if you change your position, then you'll change your perspective. Listen, listen, is there, <laughs> thank you, is there anybody in here oh, yeah. this morning who, who understands when I see things different, it affects how I act in this life. Listen, when I, when I see things differently, it affects how I behave in this life. Says when, when I see things differently, you can't trip me up. Because, just because you said you don't like me. Listen, it doesn't matter if you like me or not. I got a God who loves me. Anybody listening to me that can testify this morning? If you change your perspective, then everything in your life will shift. So he says, look up and stand up. It literally suggests you have been allowing whatever you've been going through to get the better of you. But now I want you to take possession of whatever it is that's been trying to hijack you. Says, I want you to grab it by the reins, whatever's trying to take you out. And I want you to look at it and say you not going to steal my happiness. I want you to whatever it is that's been weighing you down to take control of whatever's trying to control you. Listen, is there anybody in here who believes that if you made up your mind, if you put your trust in the Lord, the same stuff that had you down in 2022 won't be able to have you down in 2023. Now, I understand. I said it in the beginning that it ain't going to change overnight. But you got to work your way through it. You may have to push through some stuff, but not to the same degree. If it changed your mindset, listen, in 2022, you may have been crying for three days, but if it changed your perspective, and you're telling this not to hold me like it used to, you may just have to cry for half a day instead of the three days. But listen, if you hold on to God's unchanging hand and listen to what he's telling you to do, He's telling you to stand up. You've been down 
for too long. Stand up. You've been depressed for too long. Stand up. You've been stuck in the muck and mire of your situation for way too long. You gotta stand up and get ready to receive the blessings that God has in store for you. But I'm glad he doesn't tell us to stand up. But once we stand up, we need to look up to the hills from which cometh our help. Because our help comes from the Lord. You gotta look up sometimes and see what God is trying to tell you to do. Too many of us are too busy looking around at what other folk are doing, what other folk are saying, what other folk are talking about you. Weighing you down, stop looking at them. They ain't got a heaven or hell to put you in. Stop looking at them. They ain't got nothing that's going to bring you out. Stop looking at them. The Lord will make your enemies your foot soon. Stop looking at them. You got to look up. And when you look up, you see the salvation of the Lord. You see your breakthrough coming. You see joy being restored. You see happiness in your life. When you look up. And all of his glory, all of his grandeur, all of his splendor. When you look up, you'll realize that says your redemption is now. A good way of saying your redemption is right now. Your breakthrough is right now. Your overcoming is right now. Your joy is right now. Your happiness is right now. Your victory is right now. Everything that God has in store for you is on the way. Look up at your problem solving. You've been looking around for other folk to solve your problems. And you notice while you're looking around and talking to other folk to solve your problem, you notice it never gets better. It only gets worse. Because now you got everybody talking about your business. Everybody giving you their opinion. Everybody telling you you woulda, coulda, shoulda, I woulda did this, I woulda did that. Stop looking at them to be your problem solver. The real problem solver is and when he solves your problem, baby, it's fixed. It's done. It is taken care of. Push through it. Just push through it. Hard times don't come. Push through it. Griefs don't happen. may show up, push through it. Somebody may have already overcome grief. Somebody may have already overcome depression. Somebody may have already overcome whatever's been bothering you. Now you have some spiritual muscle that the next time it shows up, you can look at that old devil and say, that's all you got. You don't understand. I've been working out. I've been leading and dependent on God. And because I've been leading and dependent on God, he's been building me up. So come on, devil, whatever you got, I'm going to push through it. Because on the other side of it, on the other side, I'll be even stronger. I'll be even better. Just push through it. Just push through it. Now there will be some days. There will be some days where you're going to wake up. You're going to be light on your feet. You're going to have a smile in your heart and on your face. And everything's going to be alright. And everything's going to be good. Don't forget to say thank you. Don't forget 
to say thank you for the good days as well as the bad. Just push through. The door is open. There may be one who may have just decided, listen, I've been dealing with this stuff all by myself, going about it all wrong. Now I know how to push through it. You may have just decided, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. You may need prayer. Candidate for baptism. We extend this privilege to you right now in the name of Jesus. Just push through it. It's 2023. It's a new year. It's another day's journey. But guess what? This is what I'm glad about right here. I've been through the storm and rain. We pushed through last year, right? Oh, but I made it. I've had my share of heartache and pain. Oh. about the bitter and the sweet. I had to drink from that open up a cup. At times I felt like giving up. But hallelujah. I made it. Listen, some folk had this testimony from last year. I've been sick as I could be.
that you need. We pray and ask for uh, over all of those who continuously sow seeds, those that are watching online, uh, the ways to give uh, there. We thank God for uh, each and one of you, each and every one of you, and your faithful steward over what we do here in your giving. We just ask that God continue to bless you, continue to put in your heart the understanding of sowing seeds. When you sow seeds into good ground, God will return it back unto you a hundredfold. Amen. Yeah. As we are getting ready to
Has everybody been served? Miss anybody? Your mercy, sending your son 
that we may have life more abundantly. Now, God, we understand that we're not perfect. We understand that we've fallen short of your glory. We understand that we've done some things that was not pleasing unto you. But thank you that we have the opportunity to say, Lord, forgive us, for we have sinned and fallen short. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that you will look at us and say thy sins have been forgiven. Thank you, God, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. And then after, he took the bread and broke it, gave thanks and said, take Eat ye all of it, for this bread represents the body which is broken for you. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And they did all eat together. Likewise, in the same manner, he took the cup before they supped. He said, take, drink ye all of it, for this wine represents the blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of sin. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me, and they did all drink together. Amen. And afterwards, they went out to a Mount of Olives to pray. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go to, but we do have our various destinations, and most importantly, we can pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, God is good. God is good. I'm looking forward to what 2023 has in store for each and every one of you. And I'm looking forward to celebrating and praising God for every victory, every that you overcome and everything that God does for each and every one of you. I'm excited and I just can't wait to see what God is going to do for us. Amen. All right. I don't think we have anything else. And if all hearts are satisfied, let's not forget, make your plans now for next Sunday, uh, 3 p.m. at the Hope World Church, uh, next Sunday off Dolphin Road. All right. Let's all stay. Jesus' name, amen.